So I've been getting a lot of questions about our fishing mobile and I didn't think I'd be making a whole video dedicated to this but I'm going to be explaining everything on my fishing mobile, all the parts that I've got on it and also we're going to be taking it out going up and down the beach fishing and looking for fish, fishing and looking for good structure, hopefully catching a lot of fish today. This is our brand new Toyota Tundra that we've got maybe six months ago. We took a while to find the exact one that we wanted and find all the parts that we wanted to put on there. It wasn't a matter of just picking stuff and then just getting it right away. It actually took months for us to do research and find the stuff that we wanted personally for our own fishing mobile. So I'm gonna run you through some of the things that were important to us and maybe it'll be important to you and you can deck out your own truck like this. All these parts have been working pretty well for me but they're pretty new and I'm just testing them out right now. So I can't really give you a full review on these parts, but so far they've been working really well. Let's get into it. Let's start with the big rooftop tent here. This is called the Tapui High Box. This thing we took a while to find because we wanted, we wanted to have a rooftop tent that could set up really quickly. Now this is a hard shell. Hard shell is better for like crazy weather, I guess. It's better for just speedy setup and it's more durable. One thing I love about this is that it doesn't flap in the wind. Another thing about it is the top of this is hard. Whereas a soft shell top, the wind will flap it all around. Rain hitting it will make a lot of noise. It gets wet from the rain. This is more weatherproof and warmer because the inside of it is insulated. Uh, it's, it's just really nice in there, very cozy. I want something that can set up really quick and put down really quick because in the morning I wake up and I go fishing right away. I don't want to spend half the morning taking my tent down and then leaving. We wanted something that can set up quick and put down quick and this, this rooftop tent has been working really well for us. The thing that's holding up the tent, this is called the Yakima overhaul. These are the racks right here and that includes this whole system right here. Whatever is holding this up. These are the HD bars that do not come with it. You have to buy the HD bars separate. Now the HD bars are nice because you can put carabiners on these clips right here, right? These carabiners are great because I put stuff like my lanterns, water bottles, hats, stuff like that. It's really helpful, especially when you're up on the tent, just so that it doesn't touch sand. Even when you're not up in the tent and you're just doing things around the truck, you can hang it rather than put it on sand. And the reason why I chose the Yakima racks right here is because it can, it can work with this right here. This lockbox is very important to me. Uh, it's called a Retrax Pro. The Retrax Pro is made of aluminum. This works directly with Yakima so that it can fit both together. You don't typically find um, a, a cover like this that can also have a rooftop tent on the top. Uh, so this is a very special setup to me, is the, the Retrax Pro plus the Yakima Overhaul HDs. Uh, that, it's been working really well for me. So this Retrax, it can lock up and keep everything waterproof in, inside my bed. So I, I, it's like complete dry shelter in there. It's, it's really amazing. To open it, you push a button, and it slides all the way back really smoothly. Inside the bed of my truck, I keep my luggage right here. This is all my fishing stuff right here. My bait, bait box, my lights in here, water supply, waders, food, gas, firewood. So when I keep it in this lockbox, things are safe from the elements, not just the rain, not just from other people stealing stuff, but from wind, from sand, from anything that wants to fly into here. So this is really nice. Also, this thing can lock in any position like this. So you don't have to have it all the way to the end. You can lock it any position. I went with, with the aluminum because it has a lifetime warranty and I just like the, the material, aluminum. I want it to be strong. This has a 600 pound load capacity on top which is awesome as well. Now look at this step. This step is really awesome too, to get into the rooftop tent. Instead of using a ladder, 
I really like the step because when you're on the beach, any kind of surface is really valuable. You want any kind of flat surface. You can, you can sit on, you can put your stuff on, anything that doesn't touch the actual sand is great. So let's get back to the hitch right here. This is my, my bait station right here. Um, before, I had a, um, a Harbor Freight, it was like $80 for this, um, this hitch that we got from, from Harbor Freight. It was mediocre, it was okay. It was, it, it was great for what it was. Uh, but this is a brand new uh, beach cart that Kahuna Wagon sent us. And again, we're just testing this, this is brand new. Um, but you're able to take this right off the hitch. And that is awesome. Because before, I wasn't able to open the bed of my truck. Now with this, I can take this off the bed. I can wheel it around, I can fish with this and leave my truck in a safer spot so I don't have to get it into the water. Um, and I can also open up the bed of it and cook from there and sit there and relax, uh, get some shade. But this wagon is pretty awesome too, as well as this cooler. This cooler is like huge. It holds so much stuff and it can open from right here. That's really awesome to me. Okay. 100 bucks from Costco, that is a great find. Now walking around the front, let's talk about what I have on the cab. This rack right here is called the um, Baseline Towers. These are called Baseline Towers by Yakima. They've been working well. They've been working all right. I, I had a little bit of problems with assembling it um, because the dimensions that they gave me for my truck and how long it's supposed to be, um, the distance between them, they told me a certain number and that just wasn't the number. Um, but other than that, they've been working great. They look cool. Uh, and they also house what I think is very important right here, which is the, um, the real deal. The real deal is my rod holder and it can hold all my rods up here. I don't like having the rods in the front where it's in the grill like this, right? If you have your rods up here and you crash your car, your rods are done. <laughs> Why would you put your rods as your bumper? If you put your rods as your bumper, you're asking to, to destroy your rods. It doesn't make sense to me. So I put it up top like this. Up top like this is where it's at. I can just get out really quickly. Take my rod down and just go fishing right away. The Yakima real deal, I like it. Now let's go to the other side. Let's go look at this rocket box. This rocket box is my dry box. And um, I got this a while ago for my other car when I was going to Cape Cod. Um, but all the Yakima stuff will lock up. I just wish I had a master key. So I can open it up like this. And this dry box will hold like luggage and pillows and like tents and tarps and stuff like that. Anything you don't really want to get wet, um, especially during a rainstorm. I mean, I have a lot of room in back, back in my lockbox back here in my bed, but the more room, the merrier, honestly. It's just the more room, the more comfortable you can be. And I like that. I like to be comfortable, especially when I'm out here facing the elements. This is my current setup on my 2019 Toyota Tundra SR5. Uh, it's four wheel drive. That's the rundown. So hopefully this can help anyone who has been looking to build up their truck like this. Um, the things that are important to me may not be important to you. So take it with, take my advice with a grain of salt. I've been riding around this for maybe three or four months and I, I haven't really found too many problems yet. Uh, but Again, I'm gonna keep trying to upgrade, keep trying to uh, make things a little more easy for ourselves because it's fun and I love to do this kind of stuff. I love being out with nature and this is the closest way I can enjoy nature. I can literally be on the beach, sleeping on the beach um, and be very comfortable. Let's look at this pop-up shelter right here. This really makes me feel like I'm at home because I've actually got a shelter. Come on in. This is the gazelle. Emma's here reading. <laughs> this is the gazelle. It's a pop-up shelter that you can pop up and down in like a minute. It's really easy, really fast. So if we wanted to set up and leave camp real quick and just set up camp down the road, it would take maybe an hour at most because we have so much stuff in here, we would put it back in the bed of the truck. Uh, but I use this as like a kitchen area, as a common area if, I, if I'm bringing friends or family. 
Um, we can all just sit in here at night and eat and play cards and stuff like that. This sand-free mat... is pretty sand-free. I mean, it just falls right through. And that's really nice too because you don't always want to be completely surrounded by sand. Sometimes you just need like a, a little break from sand. And it's really nice to just chill in here when, when you've had a long day of fishing. Anyways, I'm looking at the water right now. It's looking pretty good. I'm ready to get fishing soon. Let's go fishing out of that truck. So we're just going to be driving until we see some structure or see some signs of life, some signs of fish. Uh, we've got 28 miles of beach to go up and down on, so I'm going to start heading south real quick. And oh my gosh, look at that boat. Oh my gosh, look at all those birds. I might want to try here first. Wow. If that's not an indication for fish, I don't know what is. You wanna throw it? It looks very far out and there's no structure in close here, so I might as well give it a try. <laughs> I can bait it up at least. Going with my Stella. Somehow we didn't make it too far from camp. Clam, yeah. Clam and mullet. Holy crap! Great bait for more bluefish. <laughs> but I've got enough bait for now. I'm gonna throw them back. He's so baby. It's a baby one. Look, look, look. Are you trying to get him to pop? No, I'm just holding him. You gonna touch him again? Hold him again? Yeah. Hi, buddy. <laughs> Good boy. When they're not puffed up, they're like jello. Yeah. Just kind of squish down in your hands. Yay! There's a rag up there. I like puffer fish. <laughs> I like these carabiners. The rag. 
That's a classic. You have a, a Christmas rag. <laughs> Feeling festive. Something small again. Another baby blue. Look at that, how it's biting up my line. All right, time to move. Okay, so that was just a lot of small fish. I'm looking for some bigger class fish. I'm gonna go further south, maybe find some better structure. The only reason I stopped, because I saw that boat, but I think what's feeding is actually just little, little fish. I can't get it far enough out. So I'm gonna keep going down south and look look for better structure and stuff like that. This spot looks nice. Oh, oh, there's a there's a hole in between these two sand bars right here. That looks good in between these two waves right here. tell because they suck themselves to the bottom. Emma warned me that there's something bit it and then I looked at it and the line was completely slack. Good call Emma. I'm looking for something to eat tonight but this is really fun to just fish off the back of your truck like this you can just keep moving. If there's no fish just keep moving. Where's that Santa rag? I think we lost it. All right let's give it one more cast. I'm going to try a couple more times. be on a small fish or I missed it. I'm not sure yet. Yep, I'm on the tiniest little fish ever. Oh my God. Little snapper blue. They're eating you up today. Little blue Ooh. fish. Touch it. Ooh. Really soft. Man, these little blue fish are everywhere and killing me. They keep fraying up my line and messing everything up. Hoping to catch something different, or even a bigger sized one would be nice. All right, so I'm gonna stay here for like, maybe let's try half an hour. I'll set up the sand spikes and whatnot. This, this is a great part of the tide. If we spend half an hour driving down there, we're gonna miss the tide. So I say we might as well just fish this, and then we'll head down around one, two o'clock, and then fish down there a little bit later. But let's give here a try. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so when I decide that I want to stay at this spot, I'll turn it so that the butt of the truck is facing. So I have a cutting board right here. Then I'll deploy all of my sand spikes. Okay, watch the rods. Oh, 
that's a nice one. Oh, he's beautiful. Wow. That's a pretty one. He's so pretty. He's got a little parasite on him, though. Yeah. Is that a little shrimp? No, it's a little parasite. No. Right there. Nice. Feel it. Ooh. I thought he might be rougher because he hides in the sand. Yeah. But he's so smooth. You see how camouflaged he will be? Yeah. And then anything that comes above, he'll hit it like that. Let's give it a measure. Mm. Keeper, 15 and a half. 16. Wow. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. I mean, even though it's not in season, I, I like catching flounders and red drum and black drum, stuff like that. Or big bluefish, at least. But this is a nice one. Nice. This would be tight. Um, they always smack it, and, and I see my rod bend like crazy. Okay. Okay, let's let him go. That one made my day. That was fun. Let's do it again. Let's go again. on that guy. <laughs> I think they're like the chipmunks of the sea because look at the cheeks. Look at his teeth. Don't ever stick your finger near that. Oh no. It can bite it clean off. Oh, that was oh so you cool. made me 
puff myself. Oh. <laughs> that was fun. It didn't look like a big pull. I just saw it going. <laughs> I was like, mm -mm. oh my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> I feel like I felt that like puff up. Like I felt, I felt something bite, and then it felt really heavy. And I was like, oh yeah, there's definitely something on here. Like I feel the weight, but I feel like it probably just went like as soon as I set the hook. <laughs> with a fishing mobile like this. This is my ideal kind of fishing. I love fishing on the beach like this to be able to just, if there's no fish, everyone get in, let's move down the beach and find some fish. Yeah. We ended up finding some nice flounder. Finally, yeah. High five. You got a double, right? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I hope we can inspire you to build your own fishing mobile. And if you do, let us know what you have in mind. Yeah. Comment below, what do you want to see on your own truck or your own vehicle? Or like, what's your setup? What's your current setup right now? I'm sure many of you have rigs out there, your own fishing mobiles. What's your setup? I want to hear about it. I love talking about trucks and rigs and setups, especially for beach fishing. It's so much fun. Here at Hay Skipper, we want to help you get on fish. And we want to make it easy to learn how to fish. We do this by filming videos just like this. And we also write a bunch of books and ebooks, and we publish it on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. So we, we write books about how to tie certain surf fishing rigs, how to jetty fish, how to pier fish, how to tie certain knots for certain fish, how to use all sorts of different kinds of baits. We've got a lot of knowledge on there. If you want to learn more, visit us on our website. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week.